No, I wasn't like touched as a little boy by the priest or anything, you know. But um <laughs> Well, I mean, that would make you hate religion, I think, you know. This is John McEntee. This is Luke Shively. This is Incantation. You're watching Agoraphobic News. Hey, hey, Milos here of Agoraphobic News, this time with Incantation. Hello, guys. How are you? Good. Great to be here. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's exciting. So, is this your first time at Exit Festival, right? Yes, first time. Yep. Ex excited about it, for sure. It's going to be killer. <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, so first for me, first time in Serbia, too. Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. And are you guys maybe working on a new album? Yeah, we're work we just actually sent it in to get mixed as um, we, like a, what, a few days before a tour and stuff we had it we had like most of it done for a while it was just kind of getting the loose ends done we weren't in a super rush because you know we didn't even get the tour barely for a sect of all divinities album but we really wanted to get it done before we went on this long trek because we have europe in july we have the u.s in august south america in um september and then we have some stuff in october so we figured if we don't get if we don't get it you know if we get it done now there's time for it to go through all the you know getting the artwork and all that crap done but yeah. yeah. And do you have something to that to add to that? Uh, I just think it's it's fun to be back playing and make up for the lost time. We're really just kind of <laughs> getting it in as much as we can now. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah. And maybe do you have like a certain number of songs or? Yeah, I mean we have how many I don't know how many songs we have for the album. I don't know. Ten was the final count? Yeah. Yeah, we have ten songs for that, and then we have some other... We have recorded some other Doom songs during the pandemic, too, that we're going we're gonna to do for a different release later on. And we have, I don't know, maybe another ten? I don't know how many. I didn't really count them, but we have all... We, have, we worked on a lot of music over the pandemic because, I mean, you know, you have the time to do it, you know? Yeah, it's like... Well. Not <laughs> Okay, so you guys are really known for sick album covers. So, uh, which one is the sickest to you? Is it Diabolical Conquest or about, about, Upon the Throne of Apocalypse? I don't know. Man, the sickest one. Yeah. Man, that's a tough one. I don't really know. I don't know if I have a sickest one. Um, what do you think, Luke? Um, I think I would go with Impending because... Uh, yeah, Diabolical Conquest I bought when I was in like 8th grade, figuring out what death metal was. And I bought it only because of the album cover. Yeah, it was yeah. like, this looks cool, I'm going to check it out. And <laughs> now here we are. Here you are. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah, I, I think I, I like I like Mortal Throne of Nazarene album cover. I think that's pretty, really good. I mean, I think most of them I really like a lot. I mean, I, th I also really like uh, Dirge of Elysium. It, it just has an evil look to it I like, I like you know, it's, it's cool, I, I think it's good. Yeah. So you guys started in New Jersey, but New Jersey is like better known for thrash metal instead of death metal, so how come that you popped out like from the New Jersey scene? <laughs> like, What's that? W were there any uh, death metal bands from New Jersey other than Incantation? Oh, well yeah, but, I mean, we started in New Jersey, it was, uh, we had an okay scene, I mean, when we started Incantation, we, the other bands that were around was my former band Revenant and Ripping Corpse were around yeah, there. Yeah. They are both were great bands. Um, after that, there was I don't know a lot of our a lot of the bands that we kind of were into and hung out with were kind of like it was a tri-state area thing where we were close to New York City and close to Philly, so. Like with Philly, Gorophobia was always a big band for us as far as our friends and really liked. And in New York, we had you know bands like Immolation and Suffocation, um, Mortician, uh, you know, um, I mean a whole bunch of so Apparition was a great one from there. Um, I mean, I I grew up in I was very fortunate to grow up in a place where there was just a lot of killer bands. I mean, there were a lot of killer thrash bands from there too. Overkill. Yeah, you have Overkill, you have Carnivore, you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Whiplash, um, 
you know, Anthrax even comes from there, you know. Um, you know, uh, so many bands, SOD, you know, even comes from, like, you know. I mean, it's a lot, so many, we have, we just had such a great scene. And even for hardcore, I mean, you have bands like Agnostic Front, uh, Straight Ahead, Chromags. Um, I mean, you know, the list goes on and on. If you, even Punk, Ramones, you know. I mean, I had a pretty, pretty cool area to grow up as far as just having access to so much stuff. You had a Misfits or New Jersey, you know, they were, you know, it's a lot of great stuff. Um, so really a lot of great stuff to pull from and kind of get inspiration from early on, you know. And so what is like the, like who came up with the band's name and what is like the meaning behind the band? Uh, well, actually Paul Ledney came up with the, uh, um, the name of the band when we first were starting, he said, I have this you know, I have this name incantation, but you should use that. And at first I was like, eh, I don't know. I was, I was like, you know, because I was like really good friends with Immolation. I was like, Immolation, incant, eh, I don't know. It sounds like maybe it's too much alike, you know. But I said, okay, we'll keep it until maybe we'll try to come up with something better, but we'll keep that name until it gets something better. And I guess nothing better came around because we kept it. And it's a good name now, but... It's weird. I'm always really bad at picking out names, like even album titles and stuff. I'm always questionable about it until it actually happens, you know? Like, until, like, Sect of All Divinities, when we were coming up with them, I'm like, ah, I don't know, is it good or bad? I don't really know. It's, it's okay. But now it's like I couldn't think of any other title for it. It seems, like, perfect, you know? By the time, I was like, maybe this title sucks. I don't know. And do you like the band name? Uh, yeah, I think it's awesome. <laughs> I think it's pretty original. It's it's hard to to find an original name these days, you know, yeah. especially one word. Yeah, and you know, like you guys, immolation, suffocation. You you started like the avalanche of these Asian bands. You know? Yeah, yeah. It w I know the incantation wasn't done on purpose. It just happened to have Sean at the end. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's it's crazy because at that time, yeah, we had it was immolation, incantation, suffocation, love and creation. Um, there was a couple other ones. Mortician, too. mortician yeah, mortician, yeah, yeah. It counts. It sticks in there. Yeah, we we always joke about you know it would be great to do a shun tour, you know, yeah. with all four shun bands. That would be sick as fuck, you know. Yeah, yeah actually, that's a great idea. What do you think? Uh, I would be down for that 100. percent Let's do it. Yeah, that'd be awesome. That'd be one yeah. metal freaking show. Yeah, yeah. And so you guys did a cover of Scre uh, Scream Bloody Gore, right? So who in the band is like the biggest uh, Chuck Schuldiner fan? Well, I, I think it depends because, I mean, I'm a big Chuck Schuldiner fan, but I like his early material more. I think Luke's probably more well-rounded with Chuck Schuldiner as far as liking. So, but um, it's a, a quick little thing about the Scream Bloody Gore. When we did that song, it was because people were not recognizing Chuck for his death metal, uh, you know, find, finding death metal at that time, like being one of the godfathers of death metal, we'll say. It's like he was so known for his more technical stuff at that time. Yeah. And then we were like, you know, let's do a cover of an old fucking death yeah, song yeah, yeah, yeah. to remind people that this guy also had a really important part in like what we do, not yeah. just an important part of what a tech, like more, say, more technical bands do, yeah, you know? In the early days, right? Yeah. But I mean, Luke's, Luke's definitely more into like, say, the later stuff. I, I just, I, only over the last couple of years, I started appreciating some of it. I've always had kind of a roadblock. Like, I just wasn't interested past a certain point. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's all, it's all really good. It's just in different ways, you know? Yeah. And so what is your favorite death album? Um, hopefully nobody throws stones at me for this, but Symbolic's probably my favorite. That's yeah. Why? That was kind of my gateway. It was uh, <laughs> it was kind of a blueprint for me growing up, starting my own band and playing guitar and doing vocals. Chuck was a big inspiration, and I liked more of that melodic and yeah, big yeah, yeah. big songwriting. Yeah, better production and like simpler riffs. And yeah. yeah, yeah, and the drums with Gene and just yeah, a yeah. bit more technicality. I really I really liked that. Yeah, and so you guys like have a lot of songs like Dominant Ethos or Fury's Manifesto that are against all religion. Yes. So my question is, uh, why did you like dedicate your life and career to this crusade against religions? Well, I wouldn't say it's a crusade against religion. I mean, we just, it's something that, oh, first of all, early on it was just, I, 
we were really influenced by bands like Possessed and Venom and I don't know Bathory and Celtic Frost. They really had that anti-religious vibe to it, and for us, it was just natural to to you you know utilize that because that was something that I kind of you know I I agreed with that you know religion sucks or whatever yeah. at that time. I was just more of Christianity because that was what I knew at the time. And the older I get, I start to learn that all religions really suck, yeah. you know? Yeah. And we just kind of started piling on, you know, like, okay, it's time this, you know, bash other religions because, you know, yeah. it's like... It's getting old. Yeah, it's getting, oh yeah, everyone knows Christianity sucks. But um, it, 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 I wouldn't say it's, it's, it, it's not even really a crusade. It's yeah. just something that I... I believe in, and I think us in the band believe in that religion sucks or whatever, but it's, um, I believe in people having the freedom to believe what the fuck they want. It's not, I really don't care if people are religious or not. It's just that I don't like it when they're assholes about it or when they yeah. are condescending about it. It's like, have your beliefs and, you know, deal, you know, live your life to your beliefs. Live, let me live my lives to my beliefs. Everybody's cool, you know. Yeah. When they start trying to push religious agendas yeah. on decisions, that's when it's a problem, you know. Yeah, and you know, like immolation. They told me that they were in a Catholic school when they they were kids. So, did you have like s same background or not? No, I wasn't like touched as a little boy by the priest or anything, <laughs> you know. But. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, that would make you hate religion, I think, you know? Of course, yeah. But, so, uh, no, but I, I, I mean, I went to, uh, like, CCD class and stuff like that, you know? But I was, I, I didn't go to Catholic school or anything. I, I, I learned to hate uh, Christianity on my own uh, pretty much, you know? Yeah. And uh, so, but it seems that you have, like, the biggest grudge against Catholicism, in the lyrics at least. Most of the songs are against like Catholics, Pope, etc. You know. Yeah, but just because it's easier to bash the religions you know, yeah. because I, for a long time we didn't really know enough about the other religions, you know. Yeah. But I mean, they're, they're they're all to be fair, they're all bad and they're all good if they're done the right way. If you just if they would if people would just be religious and just that's it do their thing, it doesn't fucking matter, you know. But it's like it's more. You know, I I personally, you know, had to deal with people looking down on you or trying to do, you know, tell you you're doing things wrong because you're not, you know, following the Catholic way or, you know, a Christian way or whatever. So that's why that's more emphasized, but it's not like um, you know, it would be if I grew up in another, you know, with another religion and there being assholes, I'd be yeah, yeah. bitching more about that. You know, don't even bitch about what you know. And do you guys like the song Hang the Pope by Nuclear Assault? Oh, of course. <laughs> it's a classic. Yeah, I, I actually, they played at CBGB's. They would let everyone run up on stage and get behind the mic and sing it. So I ran up behind the mic one time back in the 80s and, and it start, went to Hang the Pope, you know, did a little... With a yeah. fucking rope. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it was, it's a fun song, yeah. Nuclear Assault. They played it. John had a fest uh, a couple months ago. And Nuclear Salt came, and that was a little bonus at the end. They they played that, <laughs> and it was amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a classic. Yeah, and like in the song, uh, the fallen priest, you say like I mocked the church at 3 a.m. Yeah, that was a Kyle Kyle religion one. I mean Kyle religion, one. Kyle Kyle lyric one. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one. Though. That's a good song. Yeah, yeah I haven't played that one for a little bit. And so you have this song called the Rights of the Locusts, so what is like the idea behind the song? Like you have locusts, like biblical locusts destroying everything, so... Yeah, I mean pretty much that. I mean it's... A, the, most of the lyrics on the later albums is, is Chuck Sherwood, and it's it's a task and a half to try to explain that stuff. He's really the person to talk to about it. But yeah, it's, ba I mean, it's basically just like... Well, the locusts are actually like the religious the religious people being locuses be like they're like re, religious people are destroying everything in their path because of their religion you know just like locuses clean out everything and yeah i mean locuses has the connection of you know being in in the bible and stuff too but it's more like the people are the actual locuses yeah 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 so that's a really good idea like they're purging everything yeah 
out of themselves, basically. Yeah, they're, purging, they're, pur they're screwing everything up because of, you know... To they, make it better for them. But. Yeah, they can't, they can't, um, you know, they'll let, they'll, they believe in their religions has to be the only right way, so they'll yeah. destroy everything else. Yeah. And that's uh, that sucks. And also, there's like a song Sipe Totek about some Mayan deity on deity on the album, right? What was that? It's, it's like the song is the Sipe Totek, some oh, uh, Mayan oh, yeah, yeah. deity. Yeah. Yeah. It's like somehow connected to the, these locusts or whatever. Well, th that one that one has to do with um, the um, like Aztec. Uh, isn't the Aztec uh, sacrifice? Mayan, I think oh, Mayan. Mayan was it? Yeah. See, I forget exactly, but yeah, yeah it's like, and it, that's the uh, that's the one where they have the death call. We were, we were gonna we were gonna put one of those little, yeah, those little, yeah. We're gonna, we were we were gonna put a death call in before that one, yeah. But yeah, yeah I mean, Chuck's great at that coming up with that stuff. I. Yeah, and the song Elysium Eternity is nice, divided in six chapters. So yes. uh, can you explain what is it all about? Ah. You're asking tough <laughs> questions. Um, yeah, the, the, yeah. Not, I, I'm not brushed up on the Elysium concept at the moment, but it's a, it's another Chuck Sherwood question. I, I'll butcher it if I talk about. It. But the song itself, it was really a, a fun venture to do. That was a song. Uh, it was one of the songs off that album that Alex and myself really worked hard on coming up with some um, interesting stuff for that one. Yeah, it's yeah. a good one. And so the song uh, called uh, Impending Diabolical Conquest, there's like a line, Salvation, Somber Ecstasy. So do you think that inspired Gorgots for the song The Art of Somber Ecstasy? Like on the Obscure Out. Maybe it's like a question for you. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that Luke, is a question. Luke LeMay, you're scamming our uh, concepts now. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> um, no, I, I, I highly doubt it, but uh, I mean, hey, if if... Our lyrics did influence him or anybody else. I mean, that's yeah. fucking awesome, you know. Yeah. And Gor Gorguts is an awesome band, so it's um, yeah. awesome. Tell me about it. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be great to, you know, if we had any any part in it. But I doubt it. I mean, he probably just came up with it himself, you know. Yeah. I don't think it's a, a brain surgery uh, lyric line. It's a good line, yeah, but it's not yeah, like yeah. it's not so uncommon. Yeah. And so, are you a fan of Obscura album? I am. I, Why not? You, <laughs> you gotta be in a mood, and even then, that mood is kind of like okay, one or two songs I've had my fill. Yeah, so you <laughs> like more like first two albums, right? Yeah, yeah, Erosion and Consider Dead. Those. Yeah, I I, I remember record. like hearing Obscura for the first time, and I was like, I had a headache literally. But mm -hmm. you know, it. But later on, it became my favorite album. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so. And do you think that uh, you know world is more religious when you started, like in 1992, or today? Like, is there some change? Is world less religious or more religious? Uh, it's hard to say. I mean, I, I think in the U.S. it was more religious back then. Yeah. Maybe around the world, though, people are more religious conscious now, or something. I don't know. It's hard to say. And I, I think probably people are less religious now than it was then. When we started, like, the stuff we were doing was, like, super provocative. <laughs> I mean, we even had, um, was it, the uh, 700 Club give a, have, like, our album is one of the albums not to let your kids have in the yeah. States and stuff like that, you know. They, they were showing, like, albums that were just, like, really bad for, yeah, like, for people. For kids' health. <laughs> yeah, kids, kids. Religious and mental health, maybe you know, but it's got. But um, yeah. Back then, it was like, at least in the states, it was really controversial to to mock religion so openly. So it was that was part of the fun of doing it back then, you know, because we were pushing the limits and really, you know, every once in a while you get like protesters or something at the sh like religious protesters at something so you had like some religious groups trying to cancel your concert or whatever the, the, to go that far we had one one show wasn't canceled but was turned from an all ages to a 21 and over show that was in guadalajara mexico and um that was like 90 uh 495 I think 95 yeah. so they're really Catholics yeah they, they at that time they had the uh, 
the pan government and that's like a more religious based government in Guadalajara and yeah they tried to they tried to stop the show but they couldn't stop it but it was really funny because they had some kind of like I can't remember if it was a news clip or something but someone was telling me that they were they were letting people know not to go to not to let their kids go to show because there's going to be satanic orgies and stuff and I'm just like fuck that would be awesome if we could have satanic orgies at our show but we don't you know it's not something that you know it's, us. it's like yeah I mean, it's like you know we don't know nothing about this but i mean hey bring it on that'd be fucking awesome yeah yeah and do you guys have some some last words for this interview uh well just thank you so much for the interview it's great yeah. it's great to be here in serbia to play again i mean i haven't played here in uh i don't know close to 15 years or something so it's great to be here and um yeah we just thank you for the interview it's yeah. awesome and uh next time i have to get chuck out here to answer some of those lyric yeah. questions for you good yeah, yeah, that's do you have something to add? Um, yeah, like he said, like thanks for the interview. This yeah. was this was fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so thank you so much, and see you at the show. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Man. Yeah, yeah. Hey, people! I hope you enjoyed this episode of Agoraphobic News. Please like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel to help us grow. You can also support us on Patreon by becoming one of our patrons. And big shout out to our patron Season of Mist for supporting our work. So stay tuned for another interview and keep it metal.